Spirit Award winning chef, restaurateur, and author. He's the star of Iron Chef America and now is one of the co-hosts of ABC's The True. Please welcome Michael Simon. Good morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. In here. Welcome to the Windy City. I like the Windy City. <laughs> And we do a lot of cooking on our show, but we see you on the Chew now on, on our network. Congratulations so far. Thank you very much. Like I, well. I, took the, I took the day off just to be with you guys. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, right. <laughs> well, well, at least we're still seeing you on ABC. When, when this uh, idea was presented to you, did you did you think it would work with the collaboration of the chefs that you have on the show? Um, you know, you, you just uh, one thing I've learned with TV is never really take anything for granted. You know, um, sometimes what you feel are the greatest ideas end up being not great ideas at all. But... <laughs> Mario and I have been friends for, gosh, about 15 years. Um, so we knew each other very well. The other hosts I never had met before prior to doing the show. And we all became very good friends in and outside uh, the show. And it, it just feels good. Right. You know, it just feels it good. And, and after we kind of got through that first week, Mario and I kind of looked at each other like, this might work. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like us. This is my, this might um, work. <laughs> but I, I love, you know, I, I've cooked on television for a long time now and the food network yeah i started doing stuff on the food network in 98 and and the, there's something just beautiful about cooking live on television because you make a mistake and people could see it and they realize that you know cooking is approachable and yeah. you know I, I think cooking went through this kind of era of uh you know it's almost like i call it the martha effect where it was so perfect uh, and you know and and i love martha but it was that, like people would look at it and they go god can i do that right but then they would try that. to do it and they'd be like that's not right you know <laughs> and but when they see it live they see that hey i'm a professional chef i cook every day of my life and things happen right and so what are your new product projects you're working on well i i have a a, a new show on the cooking channel called simon suppers mm -hmm. um and it's a really fun show it's 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 the things that i cook at home with my family and my wife lizzie's on sometimes i had my mom and dad on uh -huh. um like some of my best chef friends in the business you have kids? um i have a son kyle he's 25 so oh. uh, i would say i have a, a kid not a child <laughs> <laughs> He reminds me how old I am. Well, you brought some things. You brought your must-haves for the kitchen. Yes. Which I'm curious about. Tell me. Well, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your must-haves. All right. Well, the, the first thing is, is um, you know, if you watch the chew, you'll see my love for this. It's the microplane. Um, and it's, it's a, a zester and a grater. And this is something that kind of became really popular in the kitchen about five, eh, five to ten years ago. It used to be a tool that they would file wood with. Oh. And then they discovered that it's great. To, to zest really, in the grate. So you could use the grate cheese, nutmeg, all that stuff, but because I'm Greek, we use a lot of citrus in our cuisine. Okay. And to get the zest off a lemon or a lime or an orange, there's actually more flavor in the exterior of citrus than there is in the interior. Oh, so really? if you're just using the juice, you're losing out on a lot. Mm. So you just want to oh, go, yeah. yeah, you could smell you the could oils, eat there's right all away. these great oils in here. So you just take one pass with this thing and you get like a big impact of flavor. You don't want to sit and go like this because then you get into the pith and it gets bitter. Oh. And only I'm allowed to be bitter, not my citrus. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a huge one. But you know what, that's a good tip. When you say just one pass and that's it, because I can see me going, yeah. and then I'm like, why does this not taste, <laughs> this is awesome. taste I right? I to that Michael Simon, and this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your second must have. My second must have is a bench scraper. A bench and scraper? This is just called a bench scraper. They make them in plastic, they make them in metal, they make them, you know, in materials like this. And it is to, to move things from one part of your cutting board to the other oh. so you don't have to. So, for instance, like if I had an apple or whatever and I'm slicing it up. Oh, now you try to show off and be fancy. I can't <laughs> cut anything like well, that. I'm old, remember? I've been doing this for a long time. Look, ma, no hands. So, you know, you get this on one part of your board and you want to move it to your pan and you just scoop it up and you could move it over. Right. So a bench scraper. A bench Who scraper. Knew? It's it's you know you could pick them up from anywhere literally from a dollar to eight dollars and there's it's something that I can't live with if, if it's not on my station in the kitchen I go cuckoo crazy. You get the diva and you comes out. A little diva. I get a little diva. Yes. You get a little diva. I, I need pick a bench scraper. The board, but then it sometimes falls on the floor. Right. right. That's you why know. you need a bench scraper. Right. I want one of these. Right. I'm gonna cool. get one. All right. All right. Now, you sold me. The the last thing is a food mill and you know I. I have different sizes of these at home depending on the batches of food that I use and we have them in all the restaurants. And the reason that this is great is you make like 
if you're making tomato sauces, mm -hmm. chunky sauces, things like that, and you want to strain them, but you don't want to puree them to oblivion, yeah. you run them through and you get this beautiful smooth sauce. Also, if you're a fan of mashed potatoes, you know, we are in the Midwest. If you can't make a good mashed potato, you're in big trouble. Yeah, you, know? you can say that. So this is a great way to make sure that they're smooth. After the potatoes are cooked, you know, you could take some of those potatoes mm -hmm. and you just drop them straight in the, to your food mill. You almost use your bench warmer there to scoop. Yeah, you could. You want to use that? Yeah, I am. I was thinking, Michael. No, bench warmer is the bad quarterback that doesn't start for the bear. <laughs> bench scraper is the thing. That you want. I'm just okay. <laughs> okay. So you just turn this, and it forces whatever you're, you know, doing through. And it is just, and they have different. Uh, there's different levels in here of thinness or right. thickness, and so it looks. Well, but see cool. how you just put them right through. Yeah and they're through, and then your potatoes are completely smooth, then you could whisk in your butter. Or you can leave them like that and make some good hash browns. Or great hash browns. Yes. So it's just these little tools that like you have in a professional kitchen that I think work very well in a home kitchen to kind of just make you a little bit of a better cook with really not changing anything. And all these are very inexpensive. You don't have to blow the bank on them. Right. right. So Michael, when you put the tools down and you get away from the kitchen, what's like the guilty pleasure? Do you ever just say, you know what, I got to have a Big Mac today or hey, what, I, what's your go to? Um, you know, I'm not. Um, whew, that's a t I, I love ice cream. Okay. I do love ice cream. Um, Grater's mint chocolate chip is a guilty pleasure. It's a, it's an Ohio ice cream. I don't even know if you could get it in Chicago, but man, is it good. Um, and salt and vinegar chips with oh, onion dip. Me too. <laughs> with onion dip? Oh yeah. Well, I've never tried that. Oh, now I do. I it'll like change your life forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it changes your wife's life forever after you eat it. Do you have so, a question? I sure do. This is from Roxanne, and she wants to know: Do you recommend salted or unsalted butter in general recipes? Which is better in different situations? It's a great question. I cook with unsalted butter because mm -hmm. um, I want to control the amount of salt that I put into a dish. Um, so unsalted butter is the way to go for me. Always cook with it. Occasionally I will use salted butter on a table, you know, like if we have a beautiful bread or something, some of those great European salted butters to put out and just spread them. Another butter that I love, love for spreads and to cook with is goat butter. You're seeing a little bit more of it now. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but it has a very delicate flavor to it. It's really special and delicious. Oh, I'll have to find that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just find it at a grocery store. Yeah. You have to go to a specialty store. No, they, they have it at most grocery stores now. I haven't seen it. Yeah, cool. now, Michael, on the Chew, you have so many different chefs. You guys all kind of bring something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, do, do you learn from each other? You guys all? Oh, absolutely. I, th I think that's the greatest thing about the, the, the show and, you know, the culinary world is we learn something from each other every day. You know, I mean, I, Mario and I cook each other breakfast almost every day, but, uh -huh. you know, he's this fantastic Italian cook, and I mean, I have Italian roots, but I learned so much about that cuisine from him, and some of the spices that I use because of what the things that I grew up in, you know, with my mother's slightly Greek background in the Midwest, you know, so we all show each other a little bit different. Carla with her southern things, and Carla's amazing with pastries, and so I learn a lot about pastries from Carla because I, quite frankly, I can't bake my way out of a wet satchel, so <laughs> it's, we, it's an nice audience member has a quick question for you. How do you make the perfect hard-boiled egg? The perfect hard-boiled egg. Ah, it's such a lifelong quandary. Um, <laughs> the first thing is, and it's a little bit uh, odd to think of, if you, if you buy the eggs at the grocery store and they're super fresh, like, uh, you know, think around Easter when people are buying tons of eggs. You want to let them sit in your fridge for about five days because a super fresh egg does not peel. So you start the eggs in very cold water. Um, you bring them up to a simmer. When they reach a simmer, I put in a splash of vinegar, put the lid on, shut off the stove. And then I go at eight minutes because I like the center to be a little bit, not runny, but soft. Yes. You know, that, no one wants that awful gray ring around mm -hmm. the egg. So a little bit of vinegar and salt in the water, comes up to a simmer, put the lid on, turn it off, yeah. eight minutes, pull them out, put them in an ice bath, and you're good. But the key is, is five days in the fridge before you use them, start in cold water and bring it up to the simmer slowly so the eggs don't crack, and then let them sit, and then you're good. He's good. He's good. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> Thank don't you forget to catch Michael Simon on the two, of course, every weekday right here on ABC 7 at noon. Stay with us. More One Day City Live. We'll be right back. That was good.